Hi, my name's Phil. I like talking about politics and in this video is the latest polling puts the Tories in reach of wipeout territory. I'd like to pick up on the progress being made by a campaign known as the South Devon Primary, which is seeking to act as a model for tactical voting in seats where there's a real shot of removing what has been up until now safe Tories. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel. So the latest polling from Ipsos is out now. It gives Labour a 27 point lead and has the Tories on the lowest level of support ever for an Ipsos poll. And they've been running voting intention polls since 1978. So that is now both YouGov and Ipsos, the two most accurate pollsters, if you judge by past general elections, showing that Labour have a beast of a lead over the Tories and which one which is currently widening. Frankly, although I understand people saying, well, the Tories would be mad to call an election for this spring with polls like this, you have to ask on what basis they think things will improve by waiting even longer. However, voting intention polls are not a prediction for general election results. It's worth noting there are two major factors which can cause significant shifts in the polls once a general election campaign formally begins. First, the impact of the campaign itself. Political parties save up a huge war chest of funds to spend in the weeks leading up to the general election. Many voters only make up their minds about who to vote for in the final few days, which is why this is when the bulk of the money is spent. If campaigns were not so effective at helping voters make up their minds, political groups would not be spending so much money on them in those final few days. So whatever people say their voting intention is now is not a firm intention at all. The second major factor is that there are many voters who right now are saying they don't know who they will vote for at all. There is every chance there's a significant number of Conservative voters who don't want to say they'll vote Conservative because they're looking at the state of the country go, look, how can we support this? But come polling day, they'll think to themselves, well, we don't trust the alternative. They'll hold their nose and they'll vote Tory again. So in order to make sure that neither of these factors rescues the Tories in the upcoming general election, many of us are encouraging people to vote tactically against the Tories. And we've seen from by-elections over the past couple of years, strong evidence of tactical voting taking place on a significant scale. People really do want to see the Tories not just losing power, but being booted into the next century. It is absolutely possible to make projections of a Conservative Party in third or even fourth place in the House of Commons a possibility, but it needs tactical voting. However, although there are a lot of people prepared to vote tactically against their local Conservative candidate, there are some common objections. And in this video, I'd like to focus on two of the biggest. First, can this work? And second, who is the tactical vote? So first of all, can it work? There are people who would be prepared to vote tactically who believe that their constituency is so safe for the Tories that there's really no point. You know, particularly if it means voting for a candidate you don't really like. Oh, I prefer this one. I would vote tactically if it could make a difference, but I don't believe it will. It has to be said no Tory is so safe that if all the non-Tory, uh, the non-voting voters, sorry, turned out that they would be guaranteed their seat. But realistically, yes. In the past, absolutely, some of these seats have been so safe. And I totally get the reasoning here that it won't make a difference. But this year is different. The massive MRP poll, which YouGov published recently, showed that not a single Tory candidate is likely to get better than 40% of the vote. So we're already in the position of being able to say that no Tories would get a majority of the vote, not even in their very safest seats, which means that even without getting people entirely new to, to voting to turn out, we don't even have to target those who don't normally vote. Tactical voting amongst those who vote anyway can get rid of them all. We just need people to understand right now, I know it's been different in the past, but right now in this year, there is no such thing as a safe Tory seat. Their polling is so bad. They have so obviously screwed us over so badly, not a single Tory candidate can be confident in the election campaign anymore. But then there's the second problem. 
once you accept that actually you can remove your local Tory candidate with tactical voting, who is the tactical vote? There are some constituencies where the tactical vote is not obvious. Or even if it seems clear to statistical geeks like me, it's not obvious to local voters because the mainstream media don't promote statistical geeks explaining how to bin the Tories. So there's a danger that people see that tactical voting really can change the hegemony of the, the, the Tories in their local area, but that they just split their votes amongst various progressive candidates thinking, oh, well, that's the tactical vote. Oh, no, that's the tactical vote because they don't actually know who is the most likely candidate to win. You can't always base it on the, the uh, votes from the last election, for example. So how do we deal with this? Well, how best to deal with it will very much depend on the nature of a specific constituency. But campaigners in South Devon have decided to organise uh, Northern Ireland style primaries. They are arranging for the candidates for Labour, the Liberal Democrats and the Green Party to address groups of local voters and make their pitch to be the tactical vote for their constituency. At each meeting, those attending listen to him, ask questions, then cast their votes. And once the campaign has concluded, the votes are tallied up and the campaign presents a sort of a people's champion for those wanting to vote tactically to back a single candidate. Now, this is not a model which will work everywhere, of course. Like, if there's an obvious tactical vote in your area, you would not risk having a no-hope candidate win the primary and split the effective tactical vote. That'd be madness. But this is something which has shown to work elsewhere when tactical voting would not otherwise be concentrated. Northern Ireland, for example, has noted in the Times article discussing the South Devon primary meeting, which has just taken place. And although you can imagine that the party leaderships of both Labour and the Lib Dems, at least, will not want to endorse this move because they'll say, well, you know, people should just vote for our party in every constituency. It's very much in their strategic interests. You might argue that a Lib Dem winning is of no help to Labour. It's still an opposition MP from their point of view after the election. And every extra Labour MP winning is just going to contribute to a larger, more dominant government after the election. So you'd think, well, you know, we don't really need to. And I appreciate that thinking, but it misses a few things. The first, as I've already said, don't be fooled by voting intention polls right now. We're not in a general election campaign. They will change come the actual campaign. But another thing is, like, arguing against ways of concentrating anti-Tory tactical voting is basically saying you think there should be more Tory MPs. Because if people who are prepared to vote tactically to keep the Tories out don't, for whatever reason, or if they do, but they split their vote amongst numerous anti-Tory candidates, you're helping the Tory candidate win, which means you're increasing the number of Tory MPs. You're saying we should have more Tory MPs. Well, people who believe that we should have more Tory MPs are just going to vote Conservative, right? But if people are prepared to vote tactically with the explicit aim of removing as many Tories as possible, well, that's why the, it's important to concentrate it. Because if nothing else, in nothing else, we just need to punish them for being for this deeply unpatriotic damage that they've deliberately caused to their country and their people. But finally, progressive parties do not see eye to eye on policies. That's why they're different parties. But they do tend to agree on outcomes. They agree that we need to tackle the climate emergency, that we need to improve housing, education, the NHS, that we shouldn't be dumping raw sewage into our rivers. Regardless of the parliamentary majority, cross-party support in the Commons is always powerful for getting legislation through the House of Lords. Because remember, it doesn't matter what majority you have in the House of Commons. It's all got to pass through the House of Lords. And Labour are very much in the minority there. So the more agreement you have across the House, the more progress you will make. And those agreements are way easier when there's only 25 Tory MPs. And you know what's better than only 25 Tory MPs? Only five Tory MPs. And do you know what's even better than only five Tory MPs? I think you get the idea. And it really is possible. This year it's possible. The only thing stopping it would be people who are prepared to vote tactically, because I'm not telling you to vote tactically. You vote for whom you like. But for those who are prepared to vote tactically against the Tories, not doing so, either, you know, because they don't realise just how vulnerable their previous safe Tory seat really is, or because it's not clear to them where the tactical votes need to go. 
That's the only thing stopping this. But it can work. And it's not just me who thinks so. The Tories are frightened of this. They are going to be making fake tactical voting websites to direct people to vote for the wrong choice. So beware of that. Use the stoptheTories.vote website. But also consider this. In the Times article on the South Devon primary, the local Tory MP, Anthony Mangnall, Mangnall sorry, said that the campaign was seeking to restrict democracy. Apparently, he thinks it's an affront that someone might want to make it difficult for him to win with only about a third of the vote. But aside from that, it's not restricting democracy. Making it more difficult to vote by introducing voter ID and removing people from postal ballot registers without telling them, that's restricting democracy. Being dishonest in your campaigning is restricting dis democracy. Banning peaceful protest is restricting democracy. The South Devon primary is not telling people how to vote. It's getting people together who are united in wanting a non-Tory MP to represent them. And it's asking them to choose who that candidate should be. It's actually involving more people in the democratic process. And the Tories hate that. And none of this would be necessary if people could vote with their heart and see a representative parliament forming. Proportional representation would mean we don't need to make democracy so hard. Because first past the post is restrictive to democracy. It allows a single party to have 100% of the power in parliament without even having 50% approval from the electorate, not even close to 50%. So sign up to stop the Tories dot vote for tactical voting advice. You can also check out the South Devon primary campaign website in the description below if you like. You might also check out if there's a, maybe a local tactical voting campaign in your area and keep checking because if there isn't one now, you may find there soon will be. But there we are. Those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. Hope you found the video interesting. If you did, please click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, the join button for memberships. And until next time, I'll see you later.